So a nice clean open bench uh, here for, for prepping. I've got all my toppings here all laid out. They're all chopped, they're all ready to go. Um, that way I'm not having to fumble around with, um, with getting toppings ready, breaking cheese to put on top, cutting tomatoes, whatever, whatever you want to put on there. Um, because the more time you take uh, being distracted and being held up with doing other things um, that you could have prepped earlier, the longer it's going to be, uh, when, once you've stretched your pizza base, the longer it's going to be sitting down and the, the longer time that that's on that surface, it's going to be creating moisture and it's going to start sticking. So we want to avoid that. Um, the semolina helps, obviously, uh, but the quicker, the most efficient we can be is, uh, is the best. Um, that way, we're always going to get a consistent result. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to dust that, that dough ball, get it all coated in, in semolina. That way, we're not getting any, any of that stickiness on anything else. And that's going to help with, uh, with when we, we launch it and stretch it as well. So nice dust, that way it's all covered nice and even. I'm going to bring it onto a work area here. Just reshape that so it's nice and round. And it's important to, um, to make sure that you're always trying to keep it in a round shape because if it comes out of your dough container, wherever you're getting it from, if it stretches, if it pulls, turns into a triangle, a square, whatever, whatever happens, if you don't um, basically try and re reshape that to a, a circle, you're gonna end up with a square pizza, a triangle pizza. So you wanna try and make, make sure that's, that's happening. Just is, uh, it makes it all round better, better experience. So in terms of stretching, there's a few ways um, that you can do that. I basically go in and just push from the center towards the crust, but without touching the crust. And I'm pushing around and just forming, forming that crust. Um, so once, once that's, that's basically formed, I'm not touching any of the edges because I don't wanna push any of that air out. Um, so give it a flip. That way it's a bit more even. And it's already starting to open up, as you can see, it's not springing back at all. Um, so this dough has been sitting made into bowls for about two hours. It's pretty warm today, so it's it's risen a lot quicker and it's made become a lot softer, quicker than it would normally normally would be. Um, but basically any, anywhere from two hours after boiling at room temperature is, is what, uh, what to expect from that. So still on around, mate, adding it. Again, a few different ways that you can stretch it, stretch it more, you can, Bring it around like this by stretching and pushing and bringing it around and that uh, can get you around what you want or you can do the stretch and slap method which is basically putting your your hand in here uh, in the center and you're basically pressing to stretch it out and with your other hand you're gently pulling it and then you flip it onto your hand and you bring it over now if you do it slowly it sort of looks a bit uncoordinated but over time you can build up uh, that muscle memory and, and you can do it much quicker um, and you sort of got to be, uh, you got to judge what your dough is doing because if you go too hard with that, you can rip a hole in, in, in your dough. So you got to be real, um, you know, read your dough and, and feel feel what it's doing. If it feels like it's too thin and it's becoming like you got about to rip, or you can see, it, you know, you can gauge by by touching it um, how it's um, uh, how it's you know how it's going essentially. Um, so you want to have a nice consistent. Um, thickness all around. You don't want any um, thick spots or, or thin spots because that's how you can get holes, um, especially when you're putting your um, putting your peel to then launch into the oven, uh, even with turning it as well. So if you've got a, a thin spot, it can potentially tear as it's, as it's turning because it cooks quicker and it, it basically um, uh, breaks away from, from the rest. But you know, just like everything, it's just experience and, um, and you know, doing it essentially. Um, so once that's sort of the shape we want, which is about that, give it a bit of a um, an extra flip and a shake we'll get some of our uh, sauce so sauce is a controversial one um, some people like to cook their sauce some people like to have it raw some people like to flavor it some people don't um, I personally just go with um, with canned whole San Marzano tomatoes um, and then I crush them myself and then I mix a little bit of olive oil bit of salt, basil, um, just keeping it keeping it simple. There's enough flavor you're putting on top there. Um, and those particular variety of tomatoes are really flavorsome and they're not uh, not as acidic as well. So you can get away with them uh, not being not being cooked. Um, so we go around around with that, get it all covered, keeping you know about about an inch from the uh, from the crust roughly. And then we'll get some basil on there. Now again, controversial. Some people put it on top, some people put it on the bottom. I like to put it underneath. Otherwise, you put it on top, it's gonna it's gonna burn. Um, a little bit of parmesan, and cheese. So this is fresh mozzarella or fior di latte, which I've, I've um, drained, um, pressed uh, with some uh, between two plates and a bit of weight. 
and uh, some paper towel just to get as much uh, moisture out of it because um, yeah, what you want to uh, avoid as much as possible is liquid. So even with your tomatoes, with your sauce, you don't want it to be too liquidy. You can have tomato in there, like the, 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 the meat of the tomato, but all the liquid is no good because that, um, that just creates more, uh, more moisture underneath. So it sticks and you want to uh, you want to avoid that. A little bit of olive oil over the top. Okay, and now we've got a couple ways you can do this as well. So easy way is just basically lift it up a little bit and just go straight underneath like that. Pull the, uh, the sides just to stretch it out to get it back to a, a round shape. So we're going straight in and with basically one motion, let it slide in. Quick check underneath, that's good. All right. So we've got a serving board, we've got a cooling rack. After about, I'd say, yeah, 30 seconds to a minute, um, you can slide it onto your uh, serving board and then we can uh, cut it. And you hear that crunch as well, so that's a good sound to hear. And if we pick these puppy sides to show you, you can see the air that's in there, all that, you know, gluten structure that's there as well. So yeah, it will be nice and fluffy when you when you eat it. The more air in there, the better. Um, that comes from, you know, hydration as well as fermentation too. Um, that's essentially what, uh, what you want to try and achieve is a, a nice puffy light, uh, light pizza. We'll um, get another one happening and um, yeah, see how that, uh, how that turns out. Good, a bit of semolina on the peel. Sort of in, in one shot like that. And then just open that up again. Just to get that back around. Straight in. Thank you very much for, uh, for your time to, uh, to watch it. Hope there was some beneficial information. And um, yeah, we'll see you, uh, see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Nice.